Australia's independent sporting body has told a Senate inquiry it raised concerns with the way a controversial sports grants program was being run by the government, but says the Prime Minister's office had no direct involvement with the process. Live to political reporter Eliza Edwards. Eliza, what have been the key revelations so far? Well, Annalise, Sport Australia is giving evidence now. It's the independent body responsible for assessing which sporting clubs should receive funding under the $100 million Community Sports Infrastructure Program. It says the recommendations were then passed on to then Sports Minister Bridget McKenzie, who was ultimately responsible for the funding decisions. Sport Australia says they understand that's the way the program was being structured, but the Chief Operating Officer, Luke McCann, has told the Senate inquiry they twice raised concerns about the fact that the funding decisions were deviating from the recommendations about which clubs were the most deserving. So the email you're referring to was from Robin O'Neill on Tuesday the 5th of March and uh, it expresses exactly how you characterise it, yes. Okay. And who was aware that Mr O'Neill was sending that email? I wouldn't be able to answer exactly who in the organisation was aware of that email, but it was certainly broadly aware within the organisation that we had concerns about the way those decisions were being made. The Chair of Sport Australia was also asked by Labor if he felt the organisation was being ignored or sidestepped in this decision-making process, but he put the onus back onto the Minister, saying she was ultimately responsible for the funding decisions. We provided uh, independent merit-based um, assessments um, to the Minister and the way that this program was structured was that the, the program guidelines provided that the, set out that the Minister would be the decision maker. And so uh, given that that was the basis for, for, this, uh, for decisions being made under, the, under this process, uh, given that we raised the, that we identified the merit-based assessment scores with the Minister and that information was available to her in, in making her decisions. I feel we, do, we, we fulfilled our, our job. As we know, there's also been a lot of focus on the role, if any, that the Prime Minister's office played in this sports rort saga. Uh, but the Sports Australia executives say they didn't receive any direct correspondence from the Prime Minister's office. Annalise? Eliza, thank you. Now let's take a look live at that inquiry, which is happening here in Parliament House as we speak. Let's take a look. The brief is signed on the 4th of April. Whether that assist you or not? Right. Yes. Just well, I think that goes to my question about whether or what when it went up to the minister's office. We know that on the 10th of April it was a interaction between the minister and the prime minister was had over approval for round three, and then on the 11th of April the signed brief was returned. Um, and we know that Sports Australia didn't receive that brief until the 11th of April at 8.46am. Um, it would be very useful to find out when that approval brief was sent, was sent to the Minister's office. Um, so the brief was signed off on the 4th of April, is that according That's to your records? Says. Okay, <clears throat> we might come back to this again once we've found out uh, when that that uh, brief was was uh, transmitted to the minister's office. Can I just ask? There's been um, some evidence, I think, um, that, or well, repeated evidence this morning that um, that the minister was a decision maker under the guidelines. Could I just start with under? Um, what was the legal basis, your understanding of the legal basis of the Minister's decision making? This is separate to the guidelines. If you'd like to keep watching this live and in full, you can do so on skynews.com.au forward slash extra two.